Welcome back to another tutorial. Keyshot 10.1 is here and offers quite a few improvements and new features that I'm excited to share with you. So if you already have this update, that is awesome. If not, then this is a great opportunity to check for that update in Keyshot, get it started so we can walk through all of this together. All right, let's jump in. We're gonna focus on overall enhancements first, then later in the video, go over the new features. So if you've been working with keyframe animation or the light manager, both new features in Keyshot 10, then you'll probably be excited to know that 10.1 offers multi-selection. In the animation timeline, you can now hold Control on Windows, Command on Mac to grab multiple keyframes at once. This is super helpful for making adjustments to the timing of your animation without affecting the entire node. You can also copy and paste now with this entire selection. Something to note though is that you can't select multiple keyframes across different nodes. Multi-selection only works along the same node. Now multi-selection in the light manager is also possible, which makes it easy to select and control multiple lights simultaneously. Just use either shift or control on Windows or command on Mac to select additional lights. Changes you make to one will be applied to all. You can see when I slide the power up on this area light, the other sliders move too. So same thing occurs if I were to change the color. This is important for making proportional adjustments to the entirety of a scene's lighting or selected lighting. Additionally, 10.1 brings improvements to the undo function in the light manager and light gizmos. Changes can be undone using Control Z or Command Z. You can also make changes, of course, by navigating to the edit menu and choosing from that undo stack. Moving on, let's open the material graph to check out two really helpful improvements. You can see I'm working with a multi-material with several sub-materials, and my work area is quite messy. The nodes are overlapping right now, and it's pretty unorganized. Now, if you're familiar with the Align Nodes option, then you know that this can help sort your sub-materials. But in 10.1, this has been enhanced further to better align the nodes and help you make your layout more readable. So check out this material graph with the same material in Keyshot 9 compared to the material graph in Keyshot 10.1 with those improvements to the align nodes in the work area feature. So that is really helpful in itself, but something that I absolutely love about 10.1 is this new show only active submaterial feature. This will bring you so much clarity when trying to manage several submaterials at once. It isolates the active submaterial in the work area so you can work on that material alone and not be overwhelmed by the other submaterials. And when you're done working with that one, just click the button again to turn it off, which brings all submaterials back to the work area. This has to be one of my favorite enhancements in 10.1. It's not super flashy, but it is so, so helpful. Okay, next let's jump over to our smart export functions where we can see a new export to AR option. 10.1 introduces the ability to export a single Keyshot file as separate USDZ and GLB files in just one export process. This allows you to easily create a set of files that work for Apple iOS devices and Android slash web devices in just one go. So previously in Keyshot 10, you would have to export each of these files individually with each export performing the same UV unwrapping and baking process but this new export function performs baking and UV unwrapping together, then creates the separate packages needed for USDZ and GLB. The save dialog will launch followed by the AR export dialog, which has the same settings as the individual USDZ and GLB export dialog. You can of course go and adjust these settings here, such as the DPI of the texture, whether or not to include ambient occlusion, adjust the number of samples, and lastly choose whether to prefer geometry nodes or textures because parts cannot be exported with both. I'll just leave all of these as they are and choose export. Now, real quick right here is another improvement in 10.1, which is the ability to cancel an export that utilizes baking. Previously, there was no option to exit out of this operation. And since baking has the potential to consume a large amount of time, this enhancement is really important. Okay, if we look at that output folder now, we'll find the files generated by this AR export function, and you can see how quickly you can get both of these out of Keyshot at the same time. Here is an example of that USDZ file being opened and viewed on an Apple iOS device. This is just overall a really powerful tool to quickly view your model in context in the quote unquote real world, so definitely take advantage of this feature next time you want to share a project. 
Okay, moving on to our last feature in 10.1, and that is collision detection of objects, along with the ability to settle items on other objects or the ground. Both of these features can be found in the move tool. Collision detection, which is just a checkbox, on or off, can be used to quickly align objects or it can be helpful in keeping objects aware or separate from one another. Settle is unique because it uses a physics-based simulation to drop objects as they would naturally fall. So you can use this to create scenes with a scattered look as if a bunch of objects were just dropped into the scene. We have a great new tutorial dedicated to collision detection in Settle, so if you want a more in-depth look at this feature, then head on over to that video next. And then lastly, I just want to mention that we have added support now for importing SOLIDWORKS 2021 and Rhino 7 files. Thanks for watching this Keyshot tutorial and taking the time to learn what's new in Keyshot 10.1. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends.